Hi, this is Ibarri NX from the Candid Frame, and Happy New Year, and welcome back to another season of uh, videos here on YouTube, as well as interviews on the Candid Frame Photography Podcast. Now, for this video, I wanted to talk about this whole idea of being open. I remember when I first started as a photographer, I would go out there with all this equipment, with these lenses, and I'd go out and I'd spend hours shooting, and then I'd come back home with absolutely nothing. And I think to myself, no, there was just nothing to shoot. And over the years, I've realized that it's not that there wasn't anything to shoot. It's just that I wasn't in the mindset. I wasn't open to the possibilities that were out there. Um, for the lar for a large part, I think part of me had an agenda in terms of what I wanted to photograph. And when I wasn't able to find that, I would just get, get increasingly frustrated and unhappy. And that just made matters worse. And it made it very difficult for me to really see what was happening around me and one of the things that I try to do now anytime I go out there uh, is just try to be open I try not to set uh, an agenda it's one of the reasons I work as simply as I do uh, with usually just one camera and one and one lens if at all possible so that I can be more focused on what's happening around me and respond to it and hopefully make a successful photograph now I chose three images not because I know what the thought what the thoughts of the photographer were but when I looked at those images I thought they were good examples of things that are happening around us that we're often oblivious to when we're without a camera but with a camera it's it's really important that we be open to such possibilities because I think they can make some of the most interesting and fascinating imagery Here's a shot by Kim Allen. She shot this with a Fuji uh, X100S. It was shot at ISO 1600 at 1 60th of a second at f2. And I like this photograph, obviously, because of just the, the color. The reds uh, in this bar are just, just amazing. Uh, the way they reveal the ceiling, the curtains, the bar stools, the door, the exit sign. It's just really, really neat. And as a counterpoint to that, you have the almost monochromatic uh, view of the television set that's mounted up on the wall. And when I, I see a scene like this, I'm reminded to not stop thinking about making photographs when I go inside. I do a lot of stuff out on the street. And when I go into a restaurant, I go into a bar, I go into a coffee house, sometimes that switch in my head can turn off. And I stop thinking about making photographs and I think this scene here uh, would have been a missed opportunity if Kim had not made this this picture uh, I even though it doesn't have any people in it uh, you really get the sense of the presence of people uh, even though you don't see any human figures here but the the, the colors uh, and the especially the shadows uh, make this shot really really sing um, there's a repetition of shape and pattern that's happening around this image as well. It's really a graphic shot. I mean, the first immediate draw, of course, is the color. But as you take a look at it and you explore it even further, you see some wonderful visual treats within, within, the, within the image. And this is in, in an environment where I think a lot of people would not think about making a photograph because, number one reason, there's not enough light in here, right? Um, she was shooting at... ISO 1600 so she had to crank up the ISO a bit and she's shooting wide open in order to get a reasonable shutter speed but think about how many times you've looked at a scene and gone oh there isn't enough light there and you don't even bother to try and make the photograph and my challenge to you is to to not think in that way and think about yeah I may not have a whole lot of light but that light still might be interesting let me go ahead and make a photograph let me see what happens you don't lose anything you're not you're not wasting a, a frame of film or a roll of film by doing it especially if you're shooting digital so go for it and just see see what happens here's a shot by Beller he shot this uh, with a Leica Q uh, no XF information here but uh, I suspect that this was probably, this looks like it's in Los Angeles. Yeah, it's a 6th six, six Street Bridge, um, which is going to be torn down so, sometime soon. But, um, so I, I, I assume that there were a lot of other cars here. People were hanging out. So 
it looks like this is sort of a sort of a vintage car from probably the 70s and so when people go to events like this where there are these interesting cars the cars themselves become the subject matter and so people sh shoot photographs of the entire car of uh, the details like the hubcaps the the dashboard um you know all those little little things and those can be really wonderful shots because of the color because of the line and the shapes of the car all that stuff one of the things that i don't often see is just the relationship between the driver and the car right that to me is can be really interesting but the challenge is how do you sort of bring those two together and when i look at this shot i think that this is a, a shot that kind of succeeds on that count by taking an unusual perspective by shooting through the windows of the car and framing the the person who i assume is the owner of the car uh, it creates that relationship but it does it by taking advantage of great light great color um, nice shape and form the, the, especially the way the window of the car the windshield of the car frames the sixth street bridge uh, the pa the driver's side window frames the the guy with the way of life uh, shirt there i mean this is something that is sort of out of the box and i know it's a term that's maybe overused a lot and i, I probably used it too much myself but but think about the perspective and being the kind of mindset that you have to have to be able to recognize the potential of this moment of this scene the way you know bella here makes this photograph i think most people who would go to such an event in a car show wouldn't be thinking about making a photograph of this they would just they would just create images that they've seen before either made by themselves or by made by other photographers and i think that this is a, a wonderful shining example about how being open, how, how by not taking the scene literally and really exploring a scene based on light, based on, sh based on shape, on color and tone and relationship of all of those things can result in a really interesting photograph. Lastly, we have uh, Andre, Andres uh, Neofaitu uh, using a uh, Sony ILCE7 shot at one five hundredth of a second at uh, f11 at iso 1250. Um, the iso is a little high but i think i understand that uh, by going this high he's able to use both a fast shutter speed and a small aperture it's something that i do on occasion when i want to have both uh, with the high iso performance of many of the cameras today it's not that big of a not that big of a deal but here is a real common scene. We see a lot of this in our in our Flickr group, right? People walking down the street against a very sort of interesting backdrop, a wall with a great saturated color, and we have this figure walking across the frame, and we make a shot. You know, we wait for that interesting subject to cross the path, and we make the image here. But here, Andreas is doing a lot of things differently, right? He's not just going for the literal shot that he and many of us have made over and over before of people just walking across uh walking on the sidewalk across this you know very colorful colorful wall he turns the camera down and he gets he shows us the head of the subject but he shows us the head of the subject by his or her shadow right and you see it right here on the bottom of the frame and right there on the right we have the back of the cat I mean, you don't see anyone in, it in their entirety. You don't see the person with the bag, nor do you see the, the head of the cat. But I think this is a wonderful composition, even, even or, or because of the fact he's not showing us everything. He's really shaking up the way we look at a really common scene. And I think this, this is kind of what I'm suggesting, the idea of, of moving beyond what your first instinct is when you're making a photograph. You've, if you've been out there long enough, you know what I'm talking about. You know the kinds of pictures that you've made countless number of times. And almost by instinct, when you go out there to shoot, you probably make that photograph, well, you could make that photograph blindfolded. You go out there, you see a scene, you photograph it again, and if you looked at all of the images that are on your hard drive, you go, oh, these are all variations on the theme either a person walking across a wall or a person walking down the street or, or some sort of abstract where you have some contrast of shape or color, whatever it is, right? 
you've got a whole assortment of those images. But what I'm talking about is being open to other possibilities. Other possibilities that don't fall into that, into that, into that niche of often repeated imagery. And I think part of that, being able to do that, is being open, is being able to, to take a step back and to look at things in sort of a, an abstract way where you don't look at literally as a, as a cat or a person or a car. You start looking at things in terms of shape, in terms of line, in terms of color, in terms of texture, and in terms of the relationships to each other. And I think here we, we connect between the cat and the person walking, even though they're, they're obviously not together. You know, there's not a relationship there, but within the context of the frame, there is. And that's the magic that can happen with a photograph, is that these relationships that wouldn't exist in any other, in any other part of our existence, suddenly within the context of the frame does. And the result can be a really interesting and fascinating, fascinating photograph. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you want to join the Candid Frame Flickr group, we've got a couple of thousand people uh, there already. It's amazing. Uh, all you need to do is just ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do it. Usually I get, I get to it within a couple of days. And uh, and then I'll usually pick uh, some images from uh, from the from the pool, as I did today, just to discuss some aspect of photography. And if you've not heard of The Candid Frame, we, uh, you can find us at thecandidframe.com where I have over 300 interviews with photographers from all over the world uh, that you can enjoy, that you can be inspired by. So uh, check it out. And um, that's it. So uh, thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you next time.